In this episode of Mind Pump, so we answer questions asked by listeners like you who go to our Instagram page, Mind Pump Media, and ask us a question. We pick the best ones, and then we do these episodes. Uh, but before we get into the questions, we uh, talk about current events, ourselves, we bring up studies, and we have a lot of fun. Here's what we talked about in today's we Mind Pump a good time, Sal. episode. We start out by talking about Logan Paul versus KSI fight. I can't believe we're even talking what about this. What are we doing? This is uh, silly and how Bradley Martin, I guess, uh, started some beef or something happened in the crowd. Ooh. We talked about the CPPS certification that happened here at Mind Pump Studios over the weekend. One of the best fitness certifications for personal trainers. Uh, hands down. Hands down. And uh, Joe DeFranco was here to teach some of it. Um, great guy. Um, then we talked about Adam's young photos. He sent us some photos of himself when he was 18 and 19 years old. Um, and we talked all about body image. Uh, you know, you've all heard him talk about how skinny he thought he was. He wasn't. He was actually pretty normal in the pictures. Then I talked about the documentary One Child Nation. Very depressing, but also made me very uh, proud to be living in a place that's relatively free. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the Twitter posts that we did over the weekend that caused all kinds of controversy. You can actually find Adam and I on Twitter now. We're finally on there uh, stirring up the controversy. Um, Justin brought up how his kids' flag football uh, team destroyed the other team. Whoops. To the point where the other team quit. Uh, yeah. Four minutes left in the game, they went home. Yeah. Weak sauce. I talked about a study done on photobiomodulation. Uh, Juve is one of our favorite companies that makes these lights that produce this red light that can do things like raise your testosterone. This study actually showed men's testosterone is getting raised by using the Juve red light. By the way, Juve offers financing for their red light uh, products. Uh, there's 0% APR financing for their Juve Go, Mini, and Solo. And then there's an 18-month 0% APR for the Duo, Max, Quad, and Elite. By the way, if you go to juve.com, that's J-O-O-V-V dot com forward slash mind pump. You'll get a free MAPS Prime purchase or program, I should say, with the purchase of $500 or more and free shipping. Then we talked about the newsletter that we put out and how Justin put his Moscow Mule recipe in there. He makes the best mules there you go. ever. Give it a try. Now, in the newsletter, we were using the Mir cup. It's one of the best uh, mule cups we've ever used. By the way, Mir is actually donating 100% of the money that they make on Black Friday to a nonprofit organization. Great company. We also work with them. If you go to mir.com, that's M-I-I-R.com, and use the code MindPump, you'll get a full 25% off your entire order. Then we got into the fitness portion of this episode. The first question, this person's heard that upright rows are dangerous, and yet we have them in one of our MAPS programs. Oh, no. What's the deal? So we explain it all. Next question, this person wants to know what our opinions are on touch-and-go deadlifts versus stop uh, dead stop deadlifts. So dead stop deadlifts is where you pause at the floor, let it sit for a second, and then lift it up for each rep. Uh, Touch-and-go, you tap the floor and come back up. So there's benefits and detriments uh, to each. Next question, this person wants to know what our thoughts are on rucking. That's with an R. Get your head out of the yeah. gutter. Rucking, this is where you Rucking go uh, hiking with weight on your back. Like, What are the benefits is this something that you should do? And the final question, this person wants to know if uh, we think that humans will eventually evolve to safely consume McDonald's and garbage-type food and require less exercise. Also, this month, MAPS Performance is 50% off. Now, MAPS Performance is our functional athletic-based program. So this is a workout program, builds muscle, gets a leaner, but it also focuses on getting you to move better, improve your mobility, your strength, your functional movement. It's half off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsgreen.com and use the code GREEN50, G-R-E-E-N-5-0, no space, for the discount. Did you guys uh, see the uh, YouTube drama this weekend? <laughs> the, what? the huge you talking you, about those dumb fights yeah, yeah dude what's the name logan paul versus Bro, yes what's the other guy's name ksi so million dollar purse over that that's that, oh man insane now correct me if I'm wrong. this is the second time he's done a boxing match same guy this is a rematch same oh, okay who won the first one 
Uh, I don't know, dude. Why you gotta ask hard questions like that? Yeah, that's true. We're gonna yeah, say it's like Logan. I watch and care. I, know, yeah. I just I see the aftermath. I, here, here's it's fascinating to me. It blows my mind that these guys could actually draw this big of a crowd and sell out. You sell out an arena and actually mm. get that many people to pay on pay per view. I would love to see. Maybe Doug can look mm. up uh, Logan and KSI earns X amount. See how much they made off. It of kind of makes me angry for like UFC fighters. That are well, could like, you for like real unknown. fighters? Yeah. Uh. Could, could you imagine how how mad are you if yeah. you're like a like a professional boxer that probably none of us you've know been the fighting name. for years, getting yeah. brain damage, 15, legit. 20 years working yeah. your way skills. Up. Yeah, and and then you see these kids who got famous on Instagram. What to say? Generated up to eleven million dollars. Oh my god! So whoever won got a million. Wow! wow. What did the loser get? I'm just I'm dumbfounded. The loser must have got something too. I don't know. You I, know what I'm saying? Well, Otherwise, I'm sure he split the money. I'm sure they split what the, what the money. Uh, I'm sure they went into partnership on it. Under that, I would think. Wow. Yeah, you'd think so. Wow. Both that's... fighters earning thirty to forty million dollars each are false. YouTube took a thirty percent share of the pay per view revenue, with the remaining seventy percent split between KSI and Logan Paul, each receiving. 35 percent oh share. so well, dude yeah. i mean he's so popular now like he just needs to do something and he's gonna make money you know like like he was already like they have a movie that's coming out too and yeah. we talked about that before but literally all he has to do and he doesn't have to do it well like it's gonna sell a lot of money well as this tickets. as this fight yeah. is an example of right i mean they're okay what does it say right there they they are guaranteed nine hundred thousand dollars on saturday for their fight gets guaranteed so almost a million dollars. Plus, yeah, and I'm sure that that's probably the draw, right? So 900000 But if they get more, if they earn more than that in terms of their share of the pay-per-view and all that stuff, then they'll get that amount. So they could have, that's the minimum yeah. that they made for that. So, so they that, made eleven at the end of the day. No, no, no. 11 was the total revenue generated. Oh, you're right. The revenue is what they yeah, generated. Yeah, but percentages-wise or whatever, the minimum that they're guaranteed was 900 So yeah. they could have made more. It could have uh, been a lot more. Oh, I'm sure they made millions. Off do you know how? Yeah. Do you know how many how many pro fighters make a million dollars after after fighting? <laughs> None. Just, so yeah. so like little. Conor McGregor, and that's about it. Yeah, so little, and these guys are just that's insane. Didn't um you, wasn't what you, there some some shit that went down at the fight in the audience too? With oh uh, yeah, so that's that was what was uh, going all over Instagram right now is Bradley Martin and that. Vitaly. Vitaly, is that his name? That's his YouTube, Who's, yeah. He's a, you know, I wasn't another, aware of him. Another, He's a famous YouTube guy that does like prank videos. He's got like 11 million YouTube subscribers. Mm -hmm. So it, what it's it smells fishy to me. It, it looked fishy. It, yeah. I watched it, the video. You see the, two of, you see the two of them bickering or talking shit to each other. It looks like they have front row seats to Logan's fight. And how convenient that two other Instagram, YouTube famous people are fighting for millions of dollars. Yeah. And then another two of them. I Amongst mean, it's, everybody's camera crews. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, right. A, it's a they video. They all get up at the same time. Yeah, Vitaly yeah. like, yeah. Put, you know, grabbed him by the throat and then Bradley punched him and then it looked like they made up afterwards and or whatever. they hugged. But uh, it could be a tester. I think you're right, Adam. It could be a tester to see what the response is from people uh -huh. and what a perfect place to do it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. You know what I mean? No. Well, I'll tell you what, if Bradley and Vitaly end up scheduling a fight, then that first one was definitely staged. Then it, yeah, it's confirmed. Totally. Yeah. Cause I mean, how many fights do you really get into in real life? Not many. Yeah. No. I, Never. As an adult. Yeah. And uh, and conveniently with another huge famous yeah. YouTuber. You're over I 30 mean, years old. You're getting in fights, dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to check yourself. Yeah. Is he 30? He's not 30 yet. Bradley? He's not? No. Okay. I think they're both kids still. They're both in their 20s, dude. Okay. Well, then yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Late yeah. 20s, though. You know what I'm saying? I think he's yeah, I think he's approaching 30, so. Oh. But, I mean, they're all they're all that. You know, they're, they're, they're chasing that. The, the yeah. Chasing the, the, the subscribers and likes and attention. As you know why I think can. this won't last? Because so that was what I was going to ask you guys. Do you guys think that this is going to be a yeah. a thing right now, and then it's going to come and go, or is this what we're seeing? What we're going to see in the future is people are more interested in seeing people fight that they know more mm. than they are seeing good fighters fight. No, I think it's going to come and go because people know. are going to quickly realize how boring it is. <laughs> Watching people so, yeah, how to fight. The performances keep sucking. Like I heard at the end they were talking about the actual fight and it was just like not a whole lot happened other than, you know, him like getting fouls for hitting the back of the head. And okay, like, so I'm gonna challenge the way you guys are thinking right now a little bit because WWE is well, not sure. real is not real fighting. 
Yeah, and it's but that's com- totally it's completely different. scripted and staged, and they're characters of people that you follow and you knew, you yeah. know, and you are fans of and you like. Totally different. Totally different. I'll tell you why it's All totally the different. Drama you want, although there it's not technically real fighting. Those are some of the most talented fake fighting athletes you've ever seen in your life. Have you ever seen two wrestlers who aren't good? It's boring. Like those, that that is a whole nother skill to entertain people with fighting, whether it's fake or real. You have to have real skills. Now, unless there's two social media stars or celebrities that are, you know, experts at boxing and martial arts and stuff, it's going to be boring every time. Yeah. It's like watching even street fights are. Well, I mean, uh, it's boring to us because you are a fan of fights, right? You're a fan of USC. You're a, fi- you're a fan of boxing, and so you're looking at it like, oh, this is disgraceful to the craft. But if you actually don't really care about boxing very much and you're more into the person, you're more into Bradley Martin, you're more into Logan Paul, you're more into these 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 kids and you don't give a shit really. You don't know you don't know a single professional boxer ever. Is are you right? I think you're I think you're appealing to a whole different audience. I don't know. Remember- I think you I think it's more along the lines of entertainment and you know, seeing beef between you and a, a, your your favorite Instagram person and your or your favorite YouTube person. <laughs> it's so weird. And I know it's weird, but yeah. I, I, I'm going to challenge now, your thought th- that it's going to come and go right away. Now, here's the thing: I wouldn't pay a pay per view video. I don't. I don't think. I think a lot of pe- most people wouldn't pay pay per view or attend one of those fights. Now, would they watch a YouTube video? You don't need most. If you have 11 million followers, you only need a small percentage of your 11 million followers to well, care. Uh, like I said, maybe one time. And then, okay, well, do you no, guys re- So well, your one-time theory is out the window because KSI and Logan Paul fought the first time. This one was bigger. Mm-hmm. And the first fight was terrible. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't think so. I really don't because... Uh, uh, do you guys remember... What was that boxing championship that used to be on TV where it was like regular guys? Yeah, it was Oh, the- yeah, it was a traveling thing. That's when I told you. I went and saw one of my friends like from the football team. It was like a, the Tough Man contest, right? I think they still do that. Is that called the... It was like called the Tough Man And then contest. remember that guy Butterbean who was in there who was just... Oh, clean. Butterbean. He was just... Clean and shop. Dude. Yeah, just... Kill- he has but a knockout king. He actually became a pro, uh, a pro boxer. Yeah. For a second, so I don't know, man. I don't think so. I don't think it's gonna have staying power. I think at some uh, point people are like, oh, it, I'm not gonna watch two people. It's kind of like, fight. yeah, I don't know. I think we go through cycles of this, like with Jerry Springer and with like you know real re- reality TV, and I think this is the next form of that, you know. So well, it's like now I can get whatever person I've been following forever. I could see them, uh, you know, fight some other guy. So it's I don't like, know the stats on this. Maybe Doug can look this up too. But did you know that? You, Logan Paul and I believe Bradley Martin was a part of this also. I get so funny right now, just saying all this right now that we're talking about this bullshit right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing, promoting the, the, yeah. the third fight. I, I'm, uh, hear, I'm hearing myself how dare us. <laughs> talking about yeah. it right now. I'm like this yeah. is fucking it's so dumb. Lame. I apologize yeah. for yeah. it. <laughs> but it, it's it, uh, there's somewhat it's worse than CM Punk it, going it, into the it UFC. is a little interesting to me because I, I'm just I think maybe we might be in the middle of something that is is going to be the future. You talk about, uh, Justin, you brought up a great point, reality TV. We were we were part of that generation, right? It didn't exist before us. Yeah. And it we watched it with uh, Jerry Springer and Real World, and it has now evolved into probably what a majority of most people watch today is reality TV, and I'm sure as shit, there was people that were saying exactly what you're saying, Sour. Now, who the fuck wants to watch a bunch of people on TV that don't know how to act? This is so lame. If you're really... Into, oh, it's saying all the same shit. I don't make shit. that voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Justin <laughs> does the heck? voice is better. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I'm sure that, that, that people were saying that. So anyways, Doug, sorry, I had you start looking for something I didn't tell you. So Logan Paul did a uh, like an Olympic thing. He did like the, he did like these Olympics, and he did the same thing like with... You know, the sprint, the the long jump, and and then he had all these YouTube people and stuff that were all competing against each other. So all, what is it called when something has a not a fad or a theme, but like a, a gimmick? Okay, mm-hmm. gimmicks or gimmicky fights or fights that have a gimmick have been around since the beginning of fighting. So this is not a new thing. Okay, Japan <clears throat> is notorious for this. They would have the sumo wrestler versus the little kung fu guy, or they'd have. You know, uh, remember that guy Sap? What was his first name? Bob Sap. Yeah, I remember him, and he yeah. was like the big, oh scary God. dude. And yeah. they'd have him fight like a small, he you know, Japanese people. jiu-jitsu guy. Or Japan did this for a long time, and there's definitely can be money. Money can be made there, but the gimmicky fight game never lasts. It just doesn't. And once the gimmick runs out, yeah, 
it's done. And and you know, right now you're right now you could probably make a lot of money doing this. But at some point, I think people are like yeah, they got a short this. window with this. I'll, I'll yeah. give you that. I think it will keep going, but I think at some point people are just going to be like, all right, I get it. it uh, I'm over the carny show. Well, I mean, don't you guys feel the same way about reality TV? We're not all like you don't watch the Kardashians, but there's fucking millions of people that do. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you'd have to be good at it, right? Like, what what are the Kardashians good at? <laughs> Reality TV. Like, <laughs> okay, they're really good at that. Okay, like so that. I mean, if these guys prove, they'd have to be, be really yeah. good at entertaining yeah. people through fighting. That's well, what I'm trying no, to say. see, I I disagree with that. I don't think the fight has to be that good. I think they, if they entertain you, if they can build the drama up, they can build the hype up, and they can do, they can choke each other, fake punch each other, wear their cool mirror glasses. And make uh, make a stink <laughs> over each other, and make everybody talk about Dude, it. On what its- are the Kardashians good at? I can't even. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like racking my brain for something. Right. You know? I, I, I got nothing. Sex I videos. I don't know. Yeah. I, it's uh, it's 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 a funny time, man. It's a very funny time to be uh, in this space and be around all this and <sighs> think that. Uh, this might be where we're going, man. Oh, you know. might so, you might have to fight somebody. Soon. I know. We'll yeah. set it up. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, gonna we'll... have to pitch you against somebody. <laughs> I'll be debating someone on <laughs> fitness yeah. or something. No, you're gonna fight Lane. Yeah, That's we'll it. Instead, of, instead of debating no. him on, on sugar, you're gonna have to <laughs> yeah, sell, sell to somebody fight, fight Lane. Lane. Fight Lane. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he doesn't want to do that. <laughs> he doesn't want to do that. <laughs> I'm just I'm testing the market right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's yeah. see, right? Yeah, he doesn't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Too easy. You don't want to do that, Lane. Anyway, crazy. So the so. Great reviews from the trainers that attended uh, yesterday's uh, CPPS certification in here. Yeah, but oh, yeah. Uh, Justin, what do you think? Because you took what you do the first. Cl- yeah, I loved it. Day? I went. I went for the first day, uh, and I was able to kind of sit there and absorb and see kind of what they put together. And I was very, very impressed. And uh, the level of um, the comp it was so comprehensive, but it was so uh, you know simplified. Like so, they, they took all these different concepts out there from like McGill to you know Kelly Starrett to uh, you know you name it uh, like uh, FRC FRC. Thank you FMS. Um, so th- they just took like the core of a lot of those different concepts. And they were able to just, uh, you know, have people go through this, really understand like the real, the, the real fundamental basics of of those types of modalities. But they they strung it together in, in such a way that it made, uh, you know, like perfect sense to me. I was like, wow, I this is exactly what I probably would have done to, if we were to create a, a certification because it's it was so straightforward and logical yeah the feedback i got from jessica was that it's uh that they teach you applicable stuff yeah um whereas in the past you know when i've had trainers take certifications and stuff one of the big complaints was always like i learned a lot of great stuff but i don't know how to apply it or use it i don't know if it makes sense mm-hmm. for most of my clients but this cert seems to be uh, that's, that seems to be their strength it's like you're gonna go and you're gonna learn how to actually be a better trainer when you go back to your and gym. it's real high level stuff I mean they were able to throw in FRC movements they're you know like they they talked about fascia like I was worried about that section actually because I, I remember going through like anatomy trains and and I was like wow this is really like sophisticated stuff and and they they really presented it in a way where oh things clicked and and, and they were able to string a lot of these things together it was great yeah. well Joe's a good guy yeah. he's a very very good guy one of the best ones in the space for sure so, yeah anyway. and Smitty he's got Guys, really, really a smart guy. Yeah, I'm so glad I, he, yeah. I, I didn't get a chance to talk to him too much. Uh, he did, he, yeah, he did a lot of the presenting in the first day, and uh, I think Joe did more of the second day. But uh, I really enjoyed him going through all these. You could tell he's just been in the industry for just decades. Like that guy is just a wealth of information and could answer like anybody's, uh, you know, any book that's out there related to the, to health, fitness, you know, performance. Like the guy's an almanac. Oh, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Anyway, Adam, I wanted to tell you, you know, those pictures you sent of yourself to the group the nudes no not those ones <laughs> i deleted that yeah, real, yeah. real quick i don't, yeah. Wanna, yeah, I, see I don't need any more of those <laughs> sal saved them <laughs> we're cool that's enough yeah, yeah, that yeah. send me another one i'll post it on social media <laughs> no no no. I, I'm, uh, the my uh my uh 1999 and 98 some some my senior how, year in high school so you were 18 17 18 yeah yeah, yeah so you know what you know what uh struck me about those pictures mm. um same thing that struck me about some of my old pictures of when i was younger or whatever i'm not now that i'm like far away from that age looking back i'm much more objective and uh i i what i said to myself when i saw some old pictures of myself was i'm not as skinny as i thought i was 
I don't think you were I, from how you describe yourself. If I oh, really? Up, no, you look like a so I felt you look that, like a normal tall so kid. I sent you ninety eight, ninety nine, and then two thousand one. In two thousand one, I had three or four years of training underneath me, and I was probably weighing about one hundred and eighty five pounds. Sure, and and of course, if I were, if remembering where my mind was then, I definitely th- still thought I was still super insecure about being skinny. And that physique, I look at, and I go like, oh, I was actually. In good shape. You look like an athletic kid. Yeah, yeah. I look mm-hmm. like an athletic kid. I've got muscle, it's a little bit of arm and shoulder and chest definition going on. Like I probably look pretty good with my. Is that shirt the on. one where you look like you have like the? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. What was that? They were it was for from? Hollow. It was Halloween. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Why do you have glitter on your? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's oh, not. You guys have more shirtless pictures than like all the rest of my actually, friends combined. It actually took me. Yeah. A, a, <laughs> I I wanted to find it's some ridiculous. like Sal hat, and I went through my old shoe boxes. I was trying to find some. Uh, that would even be worth posting that were similar to his, and I really didn't have anything. And I had, I found two like high school ones that you could kind of tell. I didn't have my shirt off; I was I had a t-shirt on that I felt you could kind of see how skinny I was. And then I had the one of my shirt off when I was uh, when I was like well, the ones he, even the one from '98 that you shared. You're just a normal. That's what I mean. Like, uh, sure, well, you weren't Jack, but you were a normal kid. You look yeah. like a totally. I would not see you in that picture. I would not think to myself, "Wow, that kid's." painfully skinny at all well you know what and the kid that is in one of the photos with me is is, which is funny because i remember him out of our friends like he was jacked and he's not that much bigger than i am yeah so your so your perception is definitely isn't that weird yeah way off i mean no doubt like i wasn't as bad as probably i I thought i was um although i was really skinny i'm six i was six foot and you know, 160 pounds or whatever like that. It's pretty, pretty thin. Yeah, but you're an 18 year old kid. Yeah, yeah. You just no. look like a tall kid, like a normal. You look appropriate. Is is my point? Yeah. And I mean, look, I don't look like Christian Bale and fucking what you call it. Oh, like, oh, the, the pianist. Yeah, pianist? yeah, that's the one. Why did, did I say the you say pianist? penis? No, the pianist. pianist is on the mind. So. <laughs> the, pianist. Yeah. Yeah. the pianist. Yeah. Pianist. Sure. Sure. Uh, no, but it's weird because it makes you realize how deep those insecurities were. Well, that and it, it's you. you Everything is through a filter. Everything you perceive, everything you think, everything you see when you you know when someone does something to you and you think, oh, that person is a jerk, or yeah. oh, you know, today's a terrible day, or look at that thing. It's all through this this filter of of perception that can be completely different if you were different. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You don't. What's that one saying? Like it's not. You're not observing the world. You're observing yourself. Observing the world or something like that. Mm. It's like you. It's just crazy. It blows me the fuck away every single time. I you know I, I I realize something like that, and then it makes me think of today. So what I'm what I do is I look at that and I try to apply it to now, and I think how is my how can my my perception or my filter today be distorting things? Like what are the mm. things that I think now? That I may be fucking wrong on. Well, do you do things to? Ch- I, I try and do things to challenge that. I do all the time. Yeah, but it's so it's almost impossible. One of the best ways that I've done it is by relying on people around me that I trust. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like you guys. You guys will tell me something um, about myself or whatever. Yeah, I need you guys to shame me. And it <laughs> more. <laughs> That's the, it, yeah, you're the too, hey, you're too secure with yourself. Yeah, I am I, exactly. <laughs> this is very true. Yeah, yeah. Justin's That's the most secure serpent. motherfucker yeah, in the yeah, world. I try to make you insecure. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Keep making fat jokes. You can be uncomfortable <laughs> a little, man. You know what I mean? Like, let's, let's, let's not feel good about yourself. Huh? A little bit. The huh? evolutionary uh, value of bullying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but I rely on you guys a lot. And then uh, Jessica is close to me. I trust her. So she'll, you know, and sometimes you'll hear something about yourself. Like, oh, you're annoying when you do this. And, then, and I'll be like, ah, oh, fuck you. You know, and I'm like, wait a minute. Maybe I am annoying when I do that. You, <laughs> yeah. you think about it and it's kind of crazy. It's well, I, I mean, we, yeah. we talk about this on the show a lot. And <clears throat> I'm always constantly practicing. This is why, you know, if you've listened to the show long enough, you've heard me go on several kicks, you know, where I'm focused on building strength. I'm the, you know, bodybuilder, look at me guy. I'm the, oh, I'm going to get into swimming. Oh, I'm mobility dude. Like, um, I really, uh, part of what drives me to do that is I'm aware of my deeply rooted insecurities about my body image issues. And so I intentionally 
set different goals and focuses so I can that are not just about so you that. So can change that filter. Yeah, so I can let go of that. So it's not a big deal. I can part of that is that that self-talk that I have like, oh, that's not uh, who cares if I don't look amazing or I don't look as good as I've looked before or this person looks but that, that doesn't matter to me. I'm focused on this swimming mechanics right now. Sure. That's all, you know what I'm saying? So part of that is uh, a, a practice that I've done and it's it's helped me tremendously to do that to get beyond those insecurities that I've had since I was a kid. Mm. Um, and now I've, I'm very comfortable with who I am and the size I am and what my body looks like currently right now because I know what I'm capable of. I'm fully aware mm -hmm. how much I can change my physique whenever I want. Well, it's almost like a gift, right? Because you're able to deal with something that was so uh, powerful to you um, <laughs> that now you've, at least for me, and I think you're the same way too, you can expand it to everything else, right? Mm -hmm. So like, okay, I've got this body image thing down. Took me 40 years, but I got it down. Wait a minute. I wonder how else I'm this way in other aspects of my life. Maybe not as extreme, but it does force you to at least try to take an outside view as as, as impossible as that is. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, it's crazy anyway. You know, speaking of crazy, um, I watched a documentary. Oh, you guys didn't watch it, right? The One Child Nation. Oh, I, I didn't get a chance to watch it. I yet. started to watch it, and Katrina and Cassie both looked at me and were like, "Are you really going to make us watch this can I, tonight?" Can I tell you something right now? <laughs> Heavy Every, subject matter. Everybody right. needs to watch that because it really highlights and values how awesome it is, and how uh, how bad it can be uh, living in a tyrannical society, and how awesome it is that we live. And even as imperfect as ours is, a free society. So the, the documentary is about China's uh, one-child policy that they implemented in, I think it was 1979, I want to say, and it ended in 2015. I didn't know that. Yeah. I so so they did this because, and this is what ends up happening with uh, central planners. Central planners, because communism is a centrally planned economy. You got a bunch of people who are who think they're really smart or whatever. Maybe they are. Maybe they aren't. And they try to plan everything from the top down. And so from that viewpoint, too many people is a bad thing. We only have so many resources. We can't have too many people. We're not going to be able to feed everybody. Now, when you have a free society, free market societies, more people tend to produce more, make more goods, innovate more, and it becomes a good thing. Um, and so that's why you've never had uh, – that's why like America, for example, and other free societies haven't had these kind of policies. But anyway, that was their deal. They said, oh, we're getting too big. We're not going to be able to feed everybody. We have starvation problems. Um, and they, they thought it was a population issue, not a we can't, you know, or we don't have markets that are accurate type issues. So they Im implemented this policy and it's fucking crazy. They forced sterilized women because a lot of women didn't want to do this. So they'd have a child mm. and they didn't want to get sterilized. They would force them. They'd hold them down, bring them, bring them in, force sterilize them, abort. They would do forced abortions up until, you know, the, the last month of pregnancy. There were babies that were abandoned like crazy along the streets. It was it's an it was an, it's Man, an insane so, documentary. So dark. And it's it's it was it's conducted by a girl who's Chinese who grew up in China and now lives in the U.S. So it's got a pretty good, uh, pretty accurate uh, perspective. But then they had this big. The thing that blew me away was they had this huge uh, human trafficking uh, black market there, which you think is terrible, right? Like that's terrible selling humans. But then you realize that a lot of it was because there were Chinese citizens. Who couldn't? They couldn't handle seeing babies uh, left on the uh, you know in the market or on the side of the road. Because what what ends up happening is these families would have a baby. They'd only allowed one, and it was a girl. Well, a girl can't hold the family name. Doesn't get to you know doesn't have some of the same rights or whatever. So a lot of these families would abandon their female babies, or if they had a second baby, they would abandon it, hoping somebody would find it or whatever. And uh, a lot of certain people couldn't handle it anymore. So they'd take these babies in and then didn't know what to do with them. So then they'd sell them to orphanages and then these orphanages would uh, would have Westerners adopt them. So through that whole period, you have all these Americans, for example, adopting all these Chinese babies, not realizing that many of them were just abandoned and some of them were even stolen. They even have stories where the Chinese government would go in and steal these and take these babies because wow. you already have one and then the Chinese government would sell it to an orphanage that which would then you know have it adopted. Wow. Anyway, crazy crazy documentary but as you're watching you think to yourself because i'm watching I'm like how can all these people go along with this like this is just how does this work you know but the 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 narrator made it a phenomenal point she says for people who've had every major decision planned for them in their life yeah. it's not that hard 
to get them to obey even even when they don't want to. They there was They're one used lady to conforming. Yeah, that's it. there was one lady who was who performed something like I don't know tens of thousands of these forced abortions. Anyway, she ended up stop she stopped doing them. And she, she, when they interview, she's like, "I know I'm going to a bad place when I die. I know, I, I know I'm going to pay for my sins." And and now she works on fertility, and she says she, she, tr- she's trying to help people have babies to try to reverse some of the things that she did when, when the government told her what to do. Crazy stuff, yeah. man. Almost, really? as, almost as crazy as your, your fucking social media this weekend, oh. buddy. <laughs> Boy, did you blow up the internet. Yeah, both of us did, didn't we? Huh? Yeah, yeah, mine wasn't as bad as yours, though. Yeah. I, mean, I definitely ruffled some feathers, which is, I, you know, how funny was it that I did a general post, didn't tag anybody, wasn't, wasn't pointing anybody. It was a thought that was in my mind, okay? This is how I work, you know? Shit yeah. comes in there. I don't have a filter. Just comes out. It was where I was felt inspired and just yeah. posted the, <laughs> just posted it out there, put it out there in the ether. And the, my theory is I'm going to put it out there. And if 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 it bothers somebody, it probably was for you if it bothered right. you, right? And you would either, one, move along and not like it. If you were silly enough, you would come in and Well, that's it. what's so funny. It's a general statement. on Like, so you, if you're getting offended, you're identifying with that? <laughs> would, would you really want to do that? Yeah, like, you were basic- you're admitting that right away by being offended. You were basically making fun of, like, fitness Instagram influencers. Or yeah. Whatever. And yeah. It's funny it how many nice people jab at that. It's funny. And it w- and it uh, wasn't one single particular group or person. It you was didn't just call put- anybody out. No, 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 no. I would, you know, I'd recently. But the be- I'll tell you what, though, the best insult I've ever heard. Yes. Was in the comments. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was. Bro, she got me good. She made it on the show. Yeah, there she, we go. Yeah. No. Some, she-, I, she got. Pissed, she obviously got offended by your post. Whatever. I wonder why. Anyway, yeah. she got offended by your post, and then she called you. She called you a dick. She goes, "But you're a soft yeah, dick." But, but, but a soft dick. <laughs> I was not just a dick. A soft dick. <laughs> I was like, "You win." It was such a good insult that I responded. That listen, uh, I, I wanted to not like this chick, but I like her now because she just came up with such a good insult that I for sure I'm going to reuse at least at least a couple times this week. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. no, I'll, I'll I'll say right here on that the podcast, Adam for sure for sure is a dick. But it's not. He's not a soft one. <laughs> he's, a, he's not a soft one. That's for sure. That's a soft brother. Yeah. Well, so I I got a little yeah. bit uh, like a halfy. Most I think my <laughs> most of my post that uh, went viral was pretty positive. Most people liked it, and I think uh, agreed. A handful of people I think got butt hurt over it. Yours, on the other hand, yeah. was mostly hate. Yeah, no. Well, what was it? The one on I, Twitter that you put out there? Or? Yeah. Yes, so, the, oh, okay. Basically, what I said was, and I've said this on the show before, that uh, we know now that um, heavily processed foods are probably the main cause of the obesity epidemic. And studies now show that if you consume a diet that's mostly heavily processed foods. You'll eat uh, five or, you know, some studies will show five, 600 calories more a day because these foods just make you eat more. And so there's the problem right there. Not carbs, not fats, not sugars, whatever. It's hyper palatable, heavily processed foods. So I, I said that first. And then I said, when you look at the average person's diet, now again, this is from my experience as a trainer. Anybody who's worked with clients for more than five years will attest to this. When you look at their diets, the only foods that tend to not be processed in the average person's diet, are eggs and meat. Almost everything else is, is heavily processed when you yeah. look in there. Like very little unprocessed anything except for the steak or the or, or the eggs that they ate or the chicken uh, that they ate. Or maybe fruit. That's yeah, probably or, the only thing I sure, would maybe that's probably some, about the only thing I would add in that. Sure, sure. So what I said in the post was uh, you know, with this politicization of uh, of veganism or, or or this hate towards meat, you're gonna get a lot of people who are afraid to eat meat but they're not going to replace it with anything good. They're going to replace it with more heavily processed food, which is going to end up resulting in more obesity and more people that are sick. Mm. Boy, did that piss off some people. Oh, oh yeah. boy. And I think, it's, again, it's, it's when, when something becomes politicized, the, the, the supporters or the detractors become more uh, – there's more vitriol. It's more divisive. Yeah. And it's mainly because of the politicization, the, the the fact that it's become now. I'm, I I will make this prediction right now. I predict that a version of this will be a kind of a wedge issue in these upcoming elections. I bet you anything. Oh, it's because yeah. it's already becoming this way. They're starting to use it now in politics. Man, I did get some heat. Didn't yeah, I? they're trying to win you to their ideology. 
You know, it's it's like it's not it's not a uh, let's discuss what's best for everybody and like uh, let, let's really break down this diet why it's so good for you. it's it's no you know you need to conform to these ideas because this is the new standard that yeah. everybody has to have. Now there is no this there is no diet that's best for everyone. Just there isn't one. No. Um, I, I some are better than others and some apply to more people than others. But the individual variance from person to person when you when you count for their their physiology, their microbiome, their experiences, their emotional, mental and emotional connections uh, to food, and you combine all those things and every other factor that makes you an individual, you have a fingerprint. And and by the way, that fingerprint changes. You know what diet may work good for you now may not work for you later on when you're in your 30s or when you're pregnant or when you're high, under high stress or when you're lifting weights or running or. Uh, or whatever. So uh, it's it just, I'm anti, and I'm definitely not anti vegan. I think you can do that just fine. It's just not for everybody. Well, I, I know that for a fact. I didn't get any Twitter or Instagram hate. Lame. But I did <laughs> cause a them. ruckus because uh, the last uh, flag football game we were playing with the kids, like the game before we had lost in the playoffs. So we weren't even in contention for the title or anything. And so we had this like kind of BS game that we had to just play for consolation. And so we're playing this team and we started running the scoreboard up a bit. I mean, we were just like getting everybody in through we're, we're pl- every single play was working and like scoring. And then we were like <laughs> shutting them down. Like every play, it got up to like 42 to nothing, oh. you know, with, with, with the quickness. And we weren't even like, <clears throat> I wasn't stopping. That's one way to piss off some moms. Yeah. So we're getting all like a little bit of, you know, comments and sign. They didn't even want to finish the game. It was like four minutes still to go. And they're like, Hey, you know, we're done. They threw their hands up and then we like shook it out. And I was like, well, that's weird. I mean, we played to the very last bell, you know, the, the weekend before that for, because, you know, we're in it to play it. And if you're not going to take this game seriously, that's your fault. Right. And, you are- know, like I, and two, like it was, it was a morale boost. You know, this game, I looked at it like that. I'm like, okay, everybody's going to get time to play. We're going to run all these things. We're going to make opportunities. They were making plays, and that's just how it played out. What a great lesson to teach your kids. Hey, if you're getting your butt kicked, just quit. Yeah. You know, we're already losing. Let's just get off. I couldn't believe it. No. Uh, and, and the, uh, anyways, but yeah, so we were getting all kinds of grief that we were just like, you know, didn't stop and 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 pull people. Like, I pull, I rotated everybody in. It wasn't like we were keeping our starting five in there the whole time. You should just get obnoxious. Like, All right, everybody run backwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can only hop. You just, just need to suck more. Right. You <laughs> know, like, kneel down the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Play under like, these. No, this is a sport. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, uh, cool study that was shared by uh, Juve uh, to us. So they're conducting a study on the Juve red light. Um, and the way they organize the study, this is to my, my best ability of understanding, it was there's a control group, then there was a group that used the juve light, then there was a group that did the juve light plus keto, plus a keto diet. Not sure why they threw in the keto there, but nonetheless, the men who used the juve light, all of them in, increased their free testosterone levels significantly. The women who used the juve light balanced out their hormones, and then the ones that did it with keto had the greatest uh, balancing effect, which I think is a little interesting. I want to dive hmm. a little deeper on, again, why they combined it. But And, and they haven't published this study. They haven't put it out yet, but it shows clear boosts in testosterone from utilizing I'm going to I'm going to Now show you was again. this by using it like all over their body? I know like like Ben Greenfield was like really concentrating on his groin in terms of like Yeah, I think it's all over that you need to do that. Yeah, you know uh, no, Look at this. Here we go. Here, here's the here's some of the examples of people who who were using the Juve. One one guy 24% increase in free testosterone, another guy 43% increase free wow. testosterone, another guy 45% That is so much. increase yeah, that's a big. Yeah, that's I crazy. T- well, I told you guys way back when that was what got. That's what really motivated me to be more consistent with it was uh, our buddy Metabolic Mike, who sent me over his his labs. Mm-hmm. He's like Adam. He's like, listen, I've been doing this for like the last like I think it was like six or eight weeks, and he's like, here are my labs, and he showed me, and it was a dramatic difference. Mm-hmm. It was like double. He almost doubled his his testo- his free testosterone. Well, level. here's what's interesting. And I was a soul. I mean, I have a lot of respect for the guy, right? Already, so. For him to do that, he's not selling me on anything. I already own the fucking juve. He's like, use the damn thing. Yeah, this thing has really helped me out. I've been using a pre workout, uh, testing it out, and I actually feel and so it hasn't been long enough. I've only done it maybe four times, um, but I've 
I feel like it's giving me a little bit of a performance boost. But trip off this, right? So the study shows, so what I just read was increases in free testosterone. Increases in total testosterone, were they still had increases, but they were lower. So, for example, one of the men who had a 43% increase in free testosterone, his total testosterone only went up 11%. So this tells me that it raises total testosterone a little bit, but it frees up the bound testosterone even more. Mm. And free testosterone is what matters the most because that's the one that's bioavailable. Crazy, right? Yeah. yeah so, I, I, and this is they're gonna they're gonna put this out. They're gonna publish this. Which now, is what are your thoughts on this? Because I, I I have some theories, and I have no idea. I have nothing to back it up. Um, that so I have you've noticed this before. Like, if I have like a weekend where I was out at the lake or something, and I was just I was in the sun like for two or three days straight, mm. I I feel incredible. Like the next like week after that, I don't know what it. Is. I don't I don't know if I just was deprived from the sunlight so much and then i got just a like vitamin d spikes right I, I i don't know if that's what i'm feeling afterwards but it does feel hormonal it does feel like that's what i'm getting mm -hmm. a kick up from over over like the next week i have the similar effects uh from the juve light and i'm wondering if why these people are seeing such great results yeah is, are they people who got like no sunlight right and then like they started like that's what I, I because i know we're in this cave all the time and or indoors and, and we have all this fluorescent bullshit light on us all the time and so i'm wondering if because i don't get adequate sun on a very regular mm -hmm. basis that that juve light really makes a huge difference in me and i would love to see the the controls in a study like that you know what it's if, like i got this guy did 20 minutes of sun exposure and then this guy did 20 minutes of juve yeah you know exposure right right see if right or this is a guy who consistently gets you know, sun. He's out in the like. Let's say he's a construction worker, so he's getting yeah. sun. You know, six hours a day, every day, consistently. And then here's a person who's like an engineer in in the office for twelve hours a day. And let's see what the what the juve does for each one of them. I, my theory is that if you work indoors, that's where you're where people are going to fucking feel a huge difference mm -hmm. more, even more so than. And I, I would even add that yeah, the I'm testosterone sure. boosts probably are best when men have lower testosterone versus right that's what i'm that's why i'm saying yeah that, right versus yeah. somebody who's already at, got at, high testosterone mm -hmm. yeah I, I would say that i would probably that's what i would guess at least but this is one of the first studies that i've seen that actually show this so i hope that they end up doing more and then speaking of our partners uh this is really cool this is a really cool thing so mir uh, our partner mir black friday they're going to donate 100 percent of their online and in-store sales to their nonprofit partner, Kula. This is to uh, this is one of their coffee washing stations in Rwanda. So 100% of their sales wow. on Black Friday, they're donating to this nonprofit. <clears throat> that's so cool because oh, excellent. we know being in this space that that Black Friday is for most companies, especially anybody who has, does mostly online sales. Oh, it's their biggest day. It's the biggest day of the year. So mm -hmm. to come out as a business and say that 100%, you said? Mm -hmm. 100%, uh, 100%, all of it. 100% of our revenue on probably the biggest day of the year for us is all being donated that's to a company. That's crazy, yeah. yeah. That's pretty rad. Isn't that rad? So this company, cool, I'm reading about it right <laughs> now. It says here, they eradicate poverty through the development of entrepreneurs in Rwanda. So that's really really cool. So they're don't they're giving this money to this company that is help, you know, help people help themselves, which I I I believe to be some of the best ways to do it, right? With by helping other entrepreneurs. I saw oh, that yeah. I saw that Justin included Mirror in our uh, newsletter. So I saw you finally put up the Moscow Mule on I there. I did. I gave away the, the secret. Yeah. <laughs> you gave yeah. away your secret formula? No, I love, I that, gave you, it away, I love that you included that. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, no, I like, and again, like it's just a cool, it's a cool mug for, for the drink to, to accent the drink. So it's just, I thought it was a good fit and, you know, to kind of show our partners uh, being in, involved in the Mind Pump Mule. Uh, oh, a lot of people don't even know that we have that newsletter. So J Jackie could put the the link to the in the show notes uh, for the newsletter because people I, I get asked a lot uh, about either one uh, recipes, two uh, what studies are Sal, is Sal reading or into uh, lately, or three what books am I currently reading? And every month we put that in the newsletter. So mm -hmm. if there's current studies that we're reading, or we highlight a podcast. Uh, episode that uh, we really liked in the last month. Justin put a uh, Moscow Mule recipe in there recently. There's always a book that's featured in there that I've currently probably read in a little short synopsis on it. So if you don't know that, we have that and you guys can subscribe to that newsletter. Justin, what is this? What is this? Your, what is it that you do with the mule? Is it just that you don't put too much 
lime or what's the deal? Yeah, it's that. Um, it's also the uh, the type of ginger beer I use. So I use the Bundberg, and they have like a diet one that, that only has like five grams of sugar versus like the 30 grams you're going to get on every other one of them. And some of them use like real ginger, which makes it almost too spicy, mm. uh, which uh, I, I think Bundberg uses like gin, ginger, but it's like it's downplayed quite a bit. And then uh, the, the wedge, I only use a quarter of the lime. So that's like that's part of the secret for me because then it gets a little too uh, like the balance gets thrown off with the acid and, and the sweetness. You, you ruin mules for me because I, yeah. I get them at restaurants and they're not. And then the good. mint, the mint is is something that is always neglected when I go out to order a mule. I'm like, where's the mint? Yeah, that's like the the secret component for me that I have to have that. And you got to do the clap. You got to yep. put it in your you gotta hand. Express the <laughs> the oils and do do the whole thing, man. When I saw him you're a legit that. bartender. If I see that from you, so. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll give you a bit First time I saw him do that because I don't know anything about bartending. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, it's like a magic <laughs> clapping your hands over on top of my mule. <sighs> I'm like Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. Like, I'm about to like fix your leg. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First question is from Austin Hagander. I've heard the dangers of upright rows, but see them in map split. Are they safe? Yeah, so it's funny. Uh, a long time ago, Crossing I don't know how. The, yeah, there was some controversy. I don't know how this know. became a thing. Like I remember. Yeah, what was it? It's the uh, it's uh, upper cross syndrome. That's why because everybody's rounded forward and they're just mm. the, the argument was it just makes it worse and it's also it's exaggerating the issue. Yes, oh. and so that was the idea behind why. So uh, crossing the road's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't cross yeah. the road. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's just there's. You can, we can make a case for every single exercise uh, that it's you know has there, risk involved, right? In it, like but behind the back presses and all these things. Look, yeah, if you can, upon. if you can perform a movement with good control, good stability, and good mobility, that exercise is not dangerous. I don't care what the exercise is. I really don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the exercise is. If you could do it right and you have good control, you've got the mobility, you're stable. It's safe. So now that being said, exercises all have a kind of general risk factor and reward factor. Some exercises have a lot of risk and not a lot of reward for doing them. And then other exercises are the reverse. Upright rows, are they, uh, is there more risk associated with an upright row than say like a, a, bar, a dumbbell overhead press or a dumbbell lateral? Yes, it's more complex. There's this you know, internal rotation of the shoulder that you're coming up. And some people may have issues with their rotator cuff or requires some decent mobility. But here's the deal. If it hurts you, don't do it. If it doesn't hurt you and you can do it right, it's a great exercise. Upright rows have been around forever. Yeah. It was a staple in bodybuilding routines back in the day. It's been a staple in my workouts for a very long time. It's actually something that I, st I still do every week, well, once a week. And, and if there's any exercise that you ever do in any of our programs – that bother you uh, or feel weird or you can't perform well, uh, refer to MAPS Prime and Prime Pro. And that's why we created those is yeah. because, of course, there's going to be somebody who feels that has shoulder impingement or has some sort of issue or hears clicking in their shoulder. Or, that's exactly what happened to me. Yeah. Like I, I had that from benching like too heavy too often. And it, it, it got to a point where like I, I, definitely couldn't put a whole lot of load there. And so I started doing upright rows and I'd hear clicking and then pain started to set in. And so, you know, immediately I could have thought it was the exercise, right? It's that exercise, that movement, you know, that's the issue, but it was a lot of things preceding that movement uh, that, that contributed towards that. So yeah, I had to work on, you know, mobilizing my shoulder joint and just doing the work there, but now I have no problem with it. Yeah. Dr. Brink always says it's not the exercise that hurt, hurt you. It's your body. Yeah. You know, and and again, there are definitely movements that require more skill, greater control, greater stability than other exercises, um, which means that, you know, the risk of injury is higher. You know, for example, Olympic lifts. Olympic, it's funny because nobody, you don't hear as many people, when I do an upright row or I put in a program, I get like, oh my God, upright rows are terrible for you. But then I see people doing snatches, you yeah. know, and cleans. And it's like, not that those are, bad exercises inherently but Which is those, way more risky the skill involved with those exercises is so high that the risk is of those exercises high. now if you do them right they're very safe yeah if you do them wrong which is very easy to do you can you can definitely hurt yourself um, the only reason you should avoid an exercise besides it in being inappropriate for your goals and your programming 
is if you can't do it uh, properly and if it causes pain um, or discomfort or it's exacerbating um, a, a, a current issue. Other than that, because, I mean, when I came up as a trainer, I was told upright rows, don't do them. Uh, behind the neck presses, don't do them. I was also told don't bench press all the way down. I was also told don't squat below 90 degrees. This was actually taught yeah. uh, to us trainers. Yeah. Um, all of that is, is absolutely terrible advice. If you only ever train in the things that you're, you're comfortable in and you never kind of work and try and challenge yourself to get better at the stuff you're not good at, very little. So what ends up happening is that line of the stuff that you can perform safely starts to – your body, as you get older, your body, whether you like it or not, will start pushing that line over a little bit. Unless you challenge it, unless you challenge it a little bit, do you think that practicing ninety degree bench presses will keep your shoulders healthy forever? Yeah. No. Unless you have very robotic, predictable movement constantly, yeah. you should probably work outside your ranges a bit. Yeah, and it's too bad too because um, I consider upright rows to be one of the best shoulder trap exercises. It was a staple among bodybuilders in the, I'd say, fifties, sixties, uh, and seventies for sure. Um, and it's just very effective if done properly. And it, but again, if it, if it hurts you, find out why. You know, don't just blame the exercise. Find okay, why can't I do this? Why is this hurting me? Figure it out. You can use a program like Maps Prime Pro. Um, solve the problem, and then be able to do some of the most effective exercises that uh, are known to man. Next question is from Jazz Fitness. What are your opinions on touch and go versus dead stop for exercises such as deadlifts? Yeah, deadlifts. Well, I I had this conversation with Courtney actually recently because uh, you know she's getting into our programming and starting to go through deadlifts again, and I've been very cautious with her with deadlifts specifically because of back issues uh, that she's experienced just from moving around patients and throwing her back out, and this is a very gradual thing that we're trying to build strength again and, and the the proper bracing with it. So I started doing it with with touch and go. And that was, I had to stop her immediately. And I'm like, okay, no, every single rep that you're going to take, we have to have, you know, that proper brace first. And I want you to completely stop momentum and create that intention within every rep that you're going to do. So we're, I'm not a fan of touch and go either, but we have that in one of our programs. Right. And I don't remember which one it is off the top of my head. Do you know which one it is off the top of your head? Anabolic. Yeah. Anabolic towards the end. Oh, anabolic. Yep, phase three. Well, of course, it's in the one that we weren't a part of. So, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I'm not a fan of touch and go. Uh, but touch and go, I, okay, I'm not a fan of touch and go. You'll see me do touch and goes. Okay? Mm. Uh, so I'm not a fan of it for, for the general pop because most people um, I wouldn't consider – uh, at a high enough level to be good at touch and go deadlifts because most people's form is off. And to Justin's point about taking their time in between each rep, but does that mean that again, kind of back to the last question we just answered uh, is, is touch and go deadlifts a, a bad exercise or a dangerous exercise? Well, no, not if you can perform it safely. If you can keep your core tight and you can keep good form and you have a really good looking deadlift without touch and goes, then touch and go is, is probably just fine. Now, now, I just realized that someone listening might not even know the difference between touch and go deadlifts and dead stop. So uh, real quick, dead stop, you, you bring the barbell all the way to the floor. You let it sit on the floor for about one to three seconds. Yeah, a long second. Yeah, reset and then do the deadlift again. Touch and go, you touch the floor and come up. So you're just doing the reps. Now here's what here's the challenge with touch and go deadlifts. Okay, it's not that the deadlifts don't stop; it's that you hit the ground. So if I did like a squat where I squat until the barbell hits safeties, or if I did any other exercise where I'm bouncing off something, it's going to bounce left to right. That's the yes. problem. The yes. challenge is the bounce is how you're touching the floor and your, coming up. Your QL is going to get us talk right. to you. If you're doing touch and go deadlifts and you're bouncing it off the ground, you're asking for trouble. You're and because if you're if one side touches the floor a split second before the other and you have a lot of load on there, that can cause a problem. Touch and go deadlift needs to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It's not bang, 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 even though you'll see your favorite Instagram, you know, celebrities do that. You go down, touch the floor, and come up. That's why it's called touch and go. The reason why a lot of people hurt themselves is because of the bounce part. And when you get that mm -hmm. bounce part, you get, for a split second, you lose stability. But it's so common. Problems. I mean, yes. if, if I'm going to see somebody performing a deadlift in a gym, 
typically it's touch and go, and mainly because they look at it as a reps thing. Right. Like I'm trying to get through the workout and get the reps in, and they're not taking that seriousness that especially something like a deadlift that has a little bit higher risk uh, in, in it, but has massive reward to it. But you really have to, to slow down and make sure the intention and, you know, all those mechanical things are correct. Yeah. And the reason why it's in MAPS Anabolic in phase three is first off, if you follow the program, phase three, you're between six to nine weeks into the program. It's not a program for complete beginners, but it is a general starter uh, type program. It's also phase three. Phase three, the rest periods are short meaning that you're you're not resting as long and the weight's not going to be as heavy. You're not going to do don't do touch and goes with your heavy heaviest dump uh, you know deadlift weight. You want to go in there light and if you're doing it to get reps and get a pump and that kind of stuff, that's when it becomes more appropriate. But if you're going to do touch and go again, don't bang off the floor because that will you'll lose stability in an, in a, in a, for a split second and then that tends to be when people uh, hurt themselves. Next question is from K.M. Emerson. What are your thoughts on rucking? Does it combine some of the benefits of resistance training with cardio? What impact does it have on posture? I almost thought you said a dirty word there, Doug. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm curious to what you guys think. I don't, or off the top of my head, I don't see a lot of value in it unless you are specifically training for something where you're going to need to go like for distance with a backpack on you, yeah, or yeah. carry like it, it, it's if very you're, specific, right? If you're somebody who uh, is just trying to get in good shape, or you're just trying to improve your your mile time, or just be general strength, whatever, uh, I see no value in it whatsoever. If you are going to, if you're training and you're going to go like a go ruck competition, you know, and that's part of the competition is you have to uh, you have to carry. A, a weighted vest on there, um, then that makes a lot of sense. So, so wrecking essentially is training with like weight on your body, mm -hmm. uh, right? For, for the listeners, so you can use it with a backpack, or people will do this with weight, weight vest vests or, and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm with you, Adam. I think if you're training specifically to get good at carrying things for long distances, mm. like you're going backpacking. So, I've had clients that have trained like this where they they told me, "Hey, you know, I want to get, I, I want you to get me fit and ready. I'm going to do this." You know this the seven day backpacking trip where we're going to be hiking miles every day. Everything that I'm uh, taking on this trip has to fit on my back. In which case, I would actually have them train uh, this way. They would go and do hikes, and they would carry weight. I'd, I'd have them put weight in their backpack or whatever. Or and then towards as they got closer, I had them actually carry the pack that they would carry when they would go uh, on their backpacking trip. Other than that, uh, you know, here's some of the problems with rucking. Um, people don't walk very good anyway. Like they don't have good biomechanics anyway. Right. Then they're gonna throw a lot of lot of load on, and then they're gonna go it for long distances. Your gait. Yeah, yeah it, it, fatigue. I tend to see a lot of joint problems, a lot of foot, ankle, and knee problems. You have to be pretty fit to go. Like I, I don't think you should go from like not hiking a lot. So like I'm just a regular dude now. I'm gonna start rucking. I think you need to be really good at hiking first, like and really fit, and then maybe you can add some resistance. Otherwise, it causes problems. Yeah, I was trying to think of a justified way of like throwing it in to build work capacity, or like from that you know aspect of like if I was to think of conditioning, but like adding weight into my conditioning. If my sport was something where I guess like a wrestling or where I'm actually carrying another person and trying to like. Uh, move another object that was fighting me and like the added resistance of that uh, where it would make sense where the like enduring that mattered like having that that added stress on me would matter uh, I would probably program that in somehow but uh, in, in terms of yeah like the, the joint thing would be my issue with it is all that added weight over time as you're uh, you know walking or running especially with it will uh, will definitely impact your joints negatively. Well, and the second part of the question too is: Does it combine some of the benefits of resistance training with cardio? And yeah, no, tiny bit. no, no, not at all. No, no, not really. I mean, it's basically cardio still. It's just. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, we don't. I mean, I'm not even a fan of people using weights in circuits. <laughs> That's too close to cardio. Yeah. Uh, doing cardio with just a, a weighted vest or a backpack. You'll get like it. you'll get a little bit more strength than you will without putting weight on your body, but it's it's all almost all endurance. And then, you know, they ask, what impact does it have on your posture? 
I mean, depends on the person, you know. And the load, right? If you're yeah. carrying a 60 pound bag, you're probably gonna your posture is gonna kind of really compensate to manage that mm-hmm. 60 pound. But if we're talking about a, a five or a 10, 15 pound vest on you, maybe not as much. But if you're loading a backpack on your back, uh, most people are going to be leaning forward when they do that. Your posture is going to be different. So not a lot of value. Uh, you're not getting a ton of reward. And that's not saying you don't get any reward. You're not getting a, a, a very much reward for the amount of risk and what you have to do. If your benefit is to uh, build strength, uh, there's much better uh, things for you to be doing uh, resistance training-wise. If your goal is to have great cardio endurance, you can have great cardio endurance and not have to put a weighted vest on your back. Next question is from Christy Bliss Garcia. Sal often says, evolutionarily speaking, so I'm curious if you think it's possible that humans could evolve to safely consume McDonald's type food daily and require less exercise. I've a- you know what's funny? I've actually really thought about that like long and hard and considered the possibilities of like what we're going because you got to remember that you know we're this is a small time right now, right? This this fifty to a hundred years of processed foods and what we're dealing with with all the you know it will humans a hundred years from now be able to handle all this terrible food and we'll have evo- we'll have enough generations we'll just look like fat amoebas yeah. <laughs> like that's how we'll evolve to it yeah i don't think biologically we will and, and here's why so if you if you uh, now uh, this is a very basic surface level you know uh i'm a, i'm a fan of of learning about this uh explanation so i'm not a scientist but when it comes to evolution biologically speaking um, a lot of the evolution uh, happens over long periods of time through uh, stresses and pressures, environmental um, or otherwise. And it, it takes a long time. So humans evolved to throw with accuracy, for example. That didn't happen in 100 years. It took a long time first to evolve uh, that ability. And the pressures were on us constantly um, that entire time. Now we're in a point now where, and, it, and there is a little bit of evolution that happens or, or adaptation that happens, um, not uh, through uh, what's it called uh, when your genes can. Um, damn, I, I forgot the term. When you're like, your if your mom experiences something, then you have gene epigenetics. There you go. Epigenetics will will maybe even cause some changes as well. But the main evolutionary changes that happen come from these pressures, um, and you know, the weak people die, the stronger ones live. They have the the capacity to deal with the stress, they pass on their genes over time. This becomes a big thing. We're living in a time now where our environment evolves and changes way faster than our biology does. So in the future, I highly doubt humans are going to biologically evolve to handle McDonald's, but I think our technology will evolve mm-hmm. to where right. we, where we'll be able to eat McDonald's right. and not have nanobots issues. or be able to take a pill that cancels out all the negative effects that it supposedly right. has. Right, right. And also right. The, the, the the pressures and stresses on us are they're not killing us uh until after we're uh past the age of of being able to procreate. So the reason so many things get uh, they don't get evolved out of us because they don't hit us till later. You know what I'm saying? Like if they if they kill us before we have children, then they kill us before we can pass on our genes, and then yeah. our genes don't get passed on or whatever. But those of us who are dying from eating terrible food and stuff like that, it's usually not happening until we're in our 50s, 60s, 70s. It would have to so, be the only available edible source of food left. And then, like, whoever couldn't eat it died – or you it, know right away yeah or then you know the rest of everybody that could handle it there'd be you know a variety of people that like benefited from it or you know had that's like point. detrimental that, that's the only way that it. that's the only way that's the only could way happen. you do it because there's too many options yeah there is and and again our environment changes so fast not naturally uh, but we uh influence it and modify it through technology so the the most of the evolution we're going to see from here on out is going to be through technolo- through technology. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be biological uh, evolution. And if we do evolve biologically, it's because we went in and did it ourselves. So whether we use, you know, like CRISPR technology or, you know, we're able to modify our babies or whatever, that will be how the biology changes, but not through natural means. It's just shit changes too fast. I mean, you look at like the the lifestyles we live now, 
two or three generations ago, it's already radically different. You know, that's yeah. not enough time to have these. I'm, yeah, I look at it more as like cyborgs. You know, like probably like, like way, ways like people will adapt to like embedding like software and and chips and things in their body and working with you know technology. I'm sure that's that's going to be the thing. I'm I'm tripping out on as to what that looks like in the future. Yeah, I would bet if we were to go like you know a thousand years or five thousand years in the future. My money would be that um, humans would be uh, le- less biology, more technology, far more for sure. I, I you know, That's like, a good point. It, it'd be their you know hyper intelligent robots or you know consciousness transfer or something, but it definitely wouldn't be biology. I mean, I plan to have my second kid glow. So, <laughs> <laughs> like the, do you remember those glow? Uh, remember when we were kids, glow worms? Do you remember those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go to bed with them at night because you're scared. Yeah, and it yeah. fucking lights up and shit. Totally. Give, give your kid an EMF toy yeah. to go to sleep with. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> anyway, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They're all absolutely free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpsal and Adam at mindpumpadam.